All right, so hands on preview. Let's turn it up. I'm actually going to raise my volume here too. Just turn that up. All right. Final Fantasy 16. I don't think we need anything else. I was waiting for you. Not for too long, I hope. I remember being awestruck as a teenager by the way Shadow of the Colossus dwarfed my protagonist with its titanic creatures. That feeling of man versus mountain generated by the PS2 classic is something I've rarely us. experienced since. But at a recent hands-on event for Final Fantasy 16, it happened again. Rama I felt guy. that awe, Thunder that guy. sense of colossal scale. But this time, rather than being a poetically beautiful battle, it was an explosive homage to anime warfare. Anime war warfare? It's getting me hot and bothered. The two-hour demo was, according to developer Square Enix, a special version made for media to experience, and contents may differ from the final version. Pulled from around five right, hours into so the story, the combat-focused segment like contained a trio of boss battles that showcased Final Fantasy oh, 16's ambitious approach finger? to scale. The first of these, a showdown with a spy named Benedicta, was a traditional human versus human clash that embraced the dexterity of this entry's new real-time action combat. But it was the other two, so much yeah, like grander fights, that really really caught my attention. Final Fantasy XVI sees a number of kingdoms caught Holy up in shit. a war over magical crystals. Key to this war are icons, colossal monsters that, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, you may know better as summons. In most previous games in the series, these deity-like creatures were effectively elaborate magic attacks, but in Final Fantasy XVI, they are vital components of the plot and act as major boss battles across protagonist Clive's journey. Jeez. One such icon is Garuda, a 20-meter-tall so bird-like creature as summoned by Benedicta that wields the power of wind. As I dodged and weaved around Garuda's legs and wings, deflecting blows that would kill a normal man, the battle called to mind scenes from kaiju movies and anime like Attack on Titan. After dealing enough damage to stun her, I could fire a magical grappling hook into her jaw and yank her head down to the ground, opening her face up for a chain of hugely damaging oh, attacks. Oh, okay, so that wasn't There's her something hand. inherently exciting about fights this large, and Final Fantasy 16 seems to be fully committed to going as big as it possibly Damn. can. She's getting fucked up. That's not to say the game's strengths are only in these gigantic boss fights, though. Much of the demo saw me storming through a castle while cutting down a oh, full I'm garrison so of swordsmen to roll up in the grittiest ads. combat of Final Fantasy's 36 year history. Clive strikes with fury, impaling and even stomping on enemies that have fallen to Hold the on. ground. That's not to say all the fantasy has been drawn. So it's on auto right now? Let's just make sure it's. There you go. Drawn out of Final Fantasy though, far from it. Magical abilities frequently coat the screen with vibrant particle effects. It's all a bit overwhelming at first, and the arcade-like UI that constantly yeah, spits out like damage numbers is an ugly contrast against the world's sure otherwise handsome art. But pretty. as I settled into the systems, I found the blend of action and tactical abilities rewarding. Holy it particularly shit. came alive in the rapidly paced battle against Benedicta, who pushed me to make use of all of my many skills. So the chick's name is Clive is a nimble fighter, and each swing of his sword reminds you that Final Fantasy XVI's oh, combat director is Ryoto Suzuki, best known for his work on Devil May Cry and Dragon's Dogma. Fights feel fast, layered, and incredibly flashy. The core fundamentals are pulled from Japanese action classics. Dodges, so parries, okay, uppercuts, and combo attacks. So but built atop this is, is a magic chilling. system that sees you channel the power of different icons to unleash powerful special attacks. Ooh. Holy shit! Right, at some point, you're just beating the shit out of a woman, man. I had access to the power of three icons. The Fiery Phoenix, oh, the Winds of Garuda, and the Earth-Shattering Magic so of Titan. Those are the Garuda Only sisters. one icon's abilities can be channeled so at a like time, but a quick press of the left trigger well cycles oh, through yeah, each summon on the fly. You could so fire a blast of Phoenix Flames, for instance, before quickly swapping to Garuda to launch your target into the air with a hurricane-like spin, and finally switch to Titan to finish them off with a charged power attack that strikes downwards with stone fists. Each icon ability has its own cooldown, so Holy hot swapping between the mid-fight and managing their wait times provides a light tactical edge to each clash. I'm interested to discover what tactics will be unlocked as Clive gains the power of even more icons, and I hope they feel as distinct as the three I've used so far. So this is where he gets... Clive! 
If you're accustomed to Final Fantasy's more relaxed days of picking attacks from a menu part? and find all of this somewhat intimidating, you may find it? solace in Square's novel approach to accessibility. Rather than difficulty options, there's a collection of five rings that bestow combat easing effects. The Ring of Timely the Evasion, for instance, like a will make Clive automatically dodge most uh, incoming attacks, while the Ring of Timely Strikes will perform elaborate like, combos then, with yeah, just one tap of the attack right. button. I mean, I was, there are utility-focused like rings then, like, too, as as including one that goes, issues commands to Clive's um, dog, Torgal, who can provide attack and healing assistance. Uh, with the combat already sufficiently layered, all, I can imagine even skilled players may also opt to like skip the right pet's micromanagement. These rings will hopefully mean fans of varying camera. skill levels will all be able to enjoy Final Fantasy XVI's clashes, which are made all the more dramatic by the way your attacks can seamlessly blend into the cinematics that, could, like, that showcase a particularly too. cool strike or evade. These moments are coupled to a button prompt, this is so and while cool, I'm guys. generally averse to QTEs in combat, Square Enix seems to have made it work. The slick presentation made each of the boss battles feel like momentous fights, rather than interrupted melees. The overall sense is that Final Fantasy XVI will let us be directly involved in the outrageous anime-like battles typically reserved for cutscenes. <laughs> That's never more true than in what is likely That's to awesome. become Final so Fantasy be, 16's they definitely flagship seem battle mode, Icon vs. Icon. Like, they definitely when seem Clive like summons an Icon, you're put in direct control else, of like, them, you know, those and each of, like, of these explosive clashes between like, gods are promised to be a unique experience cutscene. with bespoke oh, dude, mechanics. The up, third right. boss of the demo, a beatdown between Garuda right. and the fire demon Ifrit, was something He's akin to a nuclear-powered wrestling match. Compared to Clive, Ifrit is a very simple fighter, with just a scant few brawling abilities. But this brawl makes full use of that blending between cutscene and gameplay to convey Ifrit's immense heft and strength. Each time I'd land a blow on oh, Garuda, yeah, a see, new like animation would trigger, it's just like my favourite of which was dragging my foe face first like across a rocky landscape. Right now. It was a shallower combat experience compared to controlling Clive in the clashes with Benedicta and Garuda, but I can forgive that oh if the God. spectacle proves this wild this each so and cool. every time. It's like fucking Godzilla. Playing three very different boss fights, as well as so carving like, my way through dozens of regular shit. soldiers, has left me with a lot of hope for Final Fantasy shit, 16. But this demo was purely combat focused, to? meaning I've yet to see much of its RPG him? credentials. This, this demo's generic that medieval that castle setting barely had any exploration opportunities, feeling mostly like a stonewalled route towards the next boss. But as previously it mentioned, the content so of this demo may differ from good. the final version. And so I hope when more is revealed, so we'll discover it has environments that are much more compelling to explore. Like because should the story, the exploration, and characters live up to what purple. I've seen of the combat so far, He's then Final the Fantasy move. 16 will be a JRPG worth being excited about. Control it, Clive. So For more looks at upcoming games, check out our. Oh yeah, I saw this is a uh, this is on the. Oh wait, I saw the part where an arm went. This is on one of the trailers. Holy shit. Oh, she is curb stomping him. It looks like he had the upper hand. Uh what the fuck? That is a cinematic strike. Yeah, it seems like the the giant monster fights are gonna be very much so cinematic. Oh, she's done. Holy shit. Imagine if uh, that was in Monster Hunter. They might do something like that. So Capcom and Square, they're still on pretty friendly terms. Um, based on the last collaboration uh, for both 14 as well as uh, Monster Hunter World, they put a lot of time and effort into each other's proje uh, projects. So... That could be. I don't know. I like when I see uh, collaborations with things that I actually like. Yeah, that collab was probably one of my favorites um, out of all the collaborations between games I've ever seen because Behemoth really does look more like a Monster Hunter um, like enemy or, uh, or creature than a Final Fantasy creature. And that's why I thought it was so good. Um, but yeah, this shit looks fucking awesome. Um, I'm so pumped. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it is. Part of me, like, I'm not going to pre-order it because I'm going to have to see some more. I'm I, I'm saying that, but I'm pretty sure I'm just going to, like, the night before, I'm like, yep, I'm pre-ordering it. It's like it comes with, like, a chocobo hat or something. It's mine now. 
Yeah. I don't know. Square's burned me so many times. Um, Final Fantasy is one of the better franchises that they have, but uh, we've played them on stream. Like, they crank out shit all the time. Um, some of the worst games I've ever played have been Square Enix games, so that's why I'm worried about it. Even though Final Fantasy is my favorite franchise. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I can understand if you were on PC because uh, it would be a bad port. Yeah, I'm I'm excited that I I have a PS5 and I'm just gonna yeah I'm I'm just gonna fucking yeah we're gonna hopefully not have any issues. The PS uh, PS5 games that they've come out with um, or not games I should say uh, versions of games I haven't really had any issues with. Uh, Ten was your favorite. Ten was amazing. Ten. Uh, I, Seven, eight, nine, ten was kind of like the golden age of Final Fantasy. I feel like that's when it was on its like its absolute highest. Um, ten two can go. Ten two can go away. Um, hope this makes game of the year. It's definitely going to be a contender, but um, I really don't know. I I, I want to say yes, but I mean a lot of people were saying like yeah, fifteen. It looks like it was going to be really really good uh seven i mean seven remake wasn't it wasn't bad at all uh would i say it was game of the year i i, I don't know there's a lot of good games that came out around that time too uh 